Our planet is choking on plastic. While plastic has many valuable uses, we have become addicted to single-use plastic products with severe environmental, social, economic, and health consequences. The equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute and 17.6 billion pounds every year. Around the world, 1 million plastic bottles are purchased every minute, while up to 5 trillion plastic bags are used worldwide every year. In total, half of all plastic produced is designed for single-use purposes, used just once and then thrown away. Plastics, including microplastics, are now ubiquitous in our natural environment. They are becoming part of the Earth's fossil record and a marker of the Anthropocene, our current geological era. They have even given their name to a new marine microbial habitat called the plastisphere. So, what exactly is plastic pollution? In simple terms, it is the accumulation in the environment of synthetic plastic products, to the point that they create problems for wildlife and their habitats, as well as for human populations. Plastics are inexpensive and durable, making them very adaptable for different uses. As a result, manufacturers choose to use plastic over other materials. However, the chemical structure of most plastics renders them resistant to many natural processes of degradation and as a result, they are slow to degrade. Together, these two factors allow large volumes of plastic to enter the environment as mismanaged waste and for it to persist in the ecosystem. So, how did we get here? From the 1950s to the 1970s, only a small amount of plastic was produced, and as a result, plastic waste was relatively manageable. However, between the 1970s and the 1990s, plastic waste generation more than tripled, reflecting a similar rise in plastic production. In the early 2000s, the amount of plastic waste we generated rose more in a single decade than it had in the previous 40 years. Today, we produce about 400 million tons of plastic waste every year. This chart shows the increase of global plastic production, measured in tons per year from 1950 onwards. In 1950, the world produced only 2 million tons per year. Since then, annual production has increased nearly 230-fold, reaching 460 million tons in 2019. The short downturn in annual production in 2009 and 2010 was predominantly the result of the 2008 global financial crisis. A similar dent is seen across several metrics of resource production and consumption, including energy. We are seeing other worrying trends. Since the 1970s, the rate of plastic production has grown faster than that of any other material. If historic growth trends continue, global production of primary plastic is forecasted to reach 1.1 billion tons by 2050. We have also seen a worrying shift towards single-use plastic products, items that are meant to be thrown away after a single short use. Approximately 36% of all plastics produced are used in packaging, including single-use plastic products for food and beverage containers approximately 85% of which ends up in landfills or as unregulated waste. Additionally, some 98% of single-use plastic products are produced from fossil fuel or virgin feedstock. The level of greenhouse gas emissions associated with the production, use, and disposal of conventional fossil fuel-based plastics is forecast to grow to 9% of the global carbon budget by 2040. These single-use plastic products are everywhere. For many of us, they have become an integral part of our daily lives. The amount of plastic waste produced increased during the COVID-19 pandemic due to increased demand for protective equipment and packaging materials. Higher amounts of plastic ended up in the ocean, especially plastic from medical waste and masks. Several news reports point to a plastic industry trying to take advantage of the health concerns and desire for disposable masks. Despite global efforts to reduce the generation of plastic waste, losses to the environment are predicted to increase. Modeling indicates that without major interventions, between 23 and 37 million tons per year of plastic waste could enter the oceans by 2040, and between 155 and 265 million tons per year could be discharged into the environment by 2060. Under a business-as-usual scenario, such increases would likely be attributable to a continuing rise in production of plastic products, driven by consumer demand accompanied by insufficient improvements in waste management. As the plastic waste released into the environment already has a significant impact on ecosystems, an increase of this magnitude could have dramatic consequences. The trade in plastic waste has been identified as a main culprit of marine litter. Countries importing the waste plastics often lack the capacity to process all the material. As a result, the United Nations has imposed a ban on waste plastic trade unless it meets a certain criteria. So how do plastics move around the world? Most of the plastic trash in the oceans, Earth's last sink, flows from land. Trash is also carried to sea by major rivers, which act as conveyor belts, picking up more and more trash as they move downstream. Once at sea, much of the plastic trash remains in coastal waters, but once caught up in the ocean currents, it can be transported around the world. On Henderson Island, an uninhabited atoll, 
In the Pitcairn group, isolated halfway between Chile and New Zealand, scientists found plastic items from Russia, the United States, Europe, South America, Japan, and China. They were carried to the South Pacific by the South Pacific Gyre, a circular ocean current. So does our country produce lots of mismanaged waste? A quick answer to that is yes. Plastic will only enter rivers and the ocean if it's poorly managed. In rich countries, nearly all of it is plastic waste. Waste is incinerated, recycled, or sent to well-managed landfills. It's not left open to the surrounding environment. Low to middle income countries tend to have poor waste management infrastructure. Waste can be dumped outside of landfills, and landfills that do exist are often open, leaking waste to the surrounding environment. Mismanaged waste is material which is at high risk of entering the ocean via wind or tidal transport, or carried to coastlines from inland waterways. Per capita mismanaged waste in the Philippines is 100 times higher than in the UK. When we multiply by population, India, China, the Philippines, Brazil, and Nigeria top the list. In the Philippines, the plastics industry is not only vital to the national economy, contributing about $2.3 billion in 2018, but plastics also provide low-cost consumer goods to poor and middle-income families. However, a high dependence on single-use plastics like multi-layer sachets and pouches has led the Philippines to become a sachet economy that continues to worsen the alarming levels of marine plastic pollution in the region. By some estimates, the Philippines consumes a staggering 163 million pieces of sachets every day. Like many rapidly developing countries, the Philippines grapples with unsustainable plastic production and consumption, as well as insufficient solid waste management infrastructure. A staggering 2.7 million tons of plastic waste are generated in the Philippines each year, and an estimated 20% of it ends up in the ocean, comprised of more than 7,500 islands. The livelihoods of the Philippines' coastal communities and the fishing, shipping, and tourism industries are especially vulnerable to the impacts of marine debris. Plastic pollution affects different coastal habitats. If actions are not taken, coastal habitats such as coral reefs and mangroves may be destroyed. Coral reefs play a vital role in protecting us from storms and erosions. It also provides jobs for local communities, recreation, and a source of new medicine. When they come into contact with plastics, coral reefs can get infected with diseases. The likelihood of diseases increased by 20-fold from 4% to 89% when corals are in contact with plastic. This is especially true for spiky or structurally complex corals to be affected by plastic by up to 8 times. There is an estimated 11.1 billion plastic items entangled on coral reefs across Asia Pacific, and this is projected to increase to 40% by 2025. Mangroves also provide coastal protection. When their roots are entirely covered in plastic, this causes stress to the mangroves, which ultimately lead to their death. To protect our coastal habitats, seagrass meadows are used to counteract marine plastic pollution. They act like filters in which plastic can return landwards and not accumulate in ocean. Seagrass also absorbs significant amounts of carbon dioxide, improve water quality, and and serve as breeding grounds for invertebrates and fishes. Plastic decrease oxygen levels and temperature in seagrass bread, which affect growth and clonal architecture. Plastic pollution can affect all kinds of marine life, from birds, turtles, and different fishes. Animals can get entangled in trash, such as nets, or mistake plastics for food. This can cause lacerations, infections, reduced ability to swim, and internal injuries. Plastics also destroy the habitat of marine animals. Large system of ocean currents, called gyres, cause the formation of large garbage patches. Gyres work like conveyor belts to circulate ocean waters around the world. While the gyres circulate waters, they also bring along trash with them. This results in garbage patches, a vortex-like collection of marine debris in the ocean. The biggest one is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There are huge collections of plastics thousands of miles across containing tons and tons of plastic. These areas are inhabitable and uncrossable by marine animals. Discarded materials, some of which can be sharp, can harm people who come into contact with them. Beaches and shores can become polluted, which affects human health and recreation. Plastics don't decompose. Instead, they break down into small particles called microplastic, which are particles smaller than 5 millimeters, or nanoplastics that are smaller than 10 nanometers. The small size makes them easy for marine life to ingest. Small organisms can consume these pollutants, and these pollutants make their way up to the food chain. They are accumulated in shellfish and other seafood that people consume. Microplastics contain a myriad of harmful chemicals such as neurotoxins, carcinogens, and endocrine disruptors. They have been linked with cancer, reduced fertility, psychological illnesses, and birth defects. Marine pollution results in losses to fishing industry and tourism. Fishing plays a vital role in our economy, contributing 196 billion pesos to the country's gross domestic product. 12% of it every year comes from tourism. A large number of our well-known tourist attractions are beaches such as White Beach, Boracay, and El. 
Some policies and ordinances regarding plastic pollution were made, although some were not implemented. Some of these ordinances are Pasig City Ordinance No. 9 of 2010, Quezon City Ordinance No. 2103 of 2011, which prohibits the use of plastic bag on dry goods and regulate their use on wet goods. Banning of polystyrene was also part of the ordinance. Quezon City Ordinance No. 2876 of 2019, on the other hand, bans the use of disposable plastic utensils in all hotels and restaurant establishments within Quezon City. Some notable non-government organizations are also taking some steps regarding the reduction of plastic pollution in the country. We treat plastic like money. I'm David Katz. The Plastic Bank, which is founded by David Katz, promotes and encourages plastic recycling, during which recycled plastics are reprocessed then reintroduced to the global market as social plastic feedstock. The Plastic Project, on the other hand, aims to promote reduction of plastic usage as well as waste segregation by upcycling recyclable plastic bottles from top to bottom into something useful on a day-to-day -day basis such as wallets, face mask cases, cupboards, and even walls which were also used to build their new plastic showroom. One one of the problems that the Philippines has been facing for quite a long time is its lack of value for research. We can all agree that we can still harness scientific research better when it comes to solving various problems. Major barriers to research in the Philippines is the procurement. Even if you guys ask anyone in the local scientific community, they'll just answer the same thing. The government procurement process, otherwise known as RA9184, was created with the goal of creating a transparent, streamlined procurement process with a system of accountability to prevent rampant corruption. However, in creating a one-size-fits-all process, the country has created the largest barrier to diversifying its research landscape. One practical example of this barrier is that an experiment that would take other countries a day to do would take scientists in the Philippines 3 months and for 3 to 20 times the cost elsewhere. One of the current studies being conducted here in the Philippines for plastic solution is finding plastic-eating microbes. In Bolinao, Pangasinan, inside the country's one and only plastic research lab by a team of scientists from the University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute or UPMSI led by oceanographer Dr. Deo Florence Onda, they are researching on an unlikely ally, microbial organisms that could literally take a bite out of the mammoth problem of plastic pollution. Breakthroughs in this pursuit could open up new ways to tackle the ecological crisis of plastic waste piling up on the planet and littering the ocean. Efforts have been made to address plastic pollution in our country. In 2021, several groups came forward to sue the government for their inaction. Last 2021, the Supreme Court granted the petition for a writ of kalikasan and continuing mandamus against the Philippine government for its alleged failure to address the problem of plastic pollution. The government was also sued for the unabated production, use, and disposal of plastic. This negligence for over 20 years has led to the Philippines becoming one of the top plastic waste contributors around the world. The petitioner said, citing a 2021 study from the Ocean Cleanup. Some groups also raised the lack of proper implementation of the Solid Waste Management Law, which, they said, manifests in the absence of an updated list of products harmful to the people and environment. Our country has strong laws to mitigate the problem of plastic pollution, but we fall short on implementing them. In fact, the Philippines has quite a strong law addressing solid waste. Republic Act 9003, also known as RA 9003, or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 mandates that all open dump sites must be converted into sanitary landfills by 2004, four years after the law was passed. But 14 years after that deadline, government figures are gloomy. There are only 139 operational sanitary landfills, serving just 308 out of the country's 1,634 LGUs, and at least 425 illegal dump sites still operate across the country. So after all the exhaustion and all the points regarding this pollution, the three main things we need to do to truly address the problem of plastic pollution, according to WWF Philippines, is to close the tap by reducing the amount of plastics we produce. Second is to close the loop by improving recycling, reuse, redesign, and doing some very exciting innovative work, looking at alternatives, and lastly, to stop plastic waste from leaking into the environment. We will end this documentary with a quote. It is the worst of times, but it is the best of times because we still have a chance. That is, unless we want to have more plastics than fishes in the ocean in the next several years. Thank <laughs> you.